All right, Descartes' rule of signs. I'm going to replace this as a function because it's going to make more sense as a function rather than an equation. All right, Descartes' rule of signs. So the rational zero test tells us what the list of possible rational zeros are. Descartes' rule of signs tells us the number of real positive, real negative, and complex zeros. So before I kind of explain further, let's talk about a quadratic. Remember a quadratic? A quadratic, is it possible to have two real positive solutions? Here, let me explain. Are those two real positive x-intercepts? Is it possible to have two real negative x-intercepts? Yes. Is it possible to have one positive, one negative real x-intercept? And is it possible to have two complex? Right? That means there's no real x-intercept. Does that make sense? So when you have a real solution, it, that, it's an x-intercept. It could be two positive, two negative, one positive, one negative. That's at least for quadratics. You guys are familiar with that, right? So what Descartes' rule of signs, Descartes', Descartes rule of signs is our way of saying for any polynomial, how many real positive, how many real negative, and how many complex is possible for the problem. It doesn't tell you exactly what you have, but it just tells you what's possible. Kind of like how the rational zero test. It doesn't tell you what the zeros are. It just tells you what the possible zeros are. OK? So to do that, the first one is usually the easiest and the one that students always remember. So the first step goes like this. To find the number of real positive, all you simply do is take your function f of x. And you determine the number of sign changes between the terms. A sign change means that the term is going from positive to negative or negative to positive. So in this case, I have two sign changes. Would everybody agree with me? Now, Descartes' rule of signs, this is kind of get confusing, but this is just his rule. Descartes' rule of signs states that the number of sign changes minus an even number is the number of possible um, positive or negative real zeros. So how many sign changes do I have? Two. What's an even number I could subtract from two? Two. So two minus two is zero. You could subtract four, but four would give you negative, negative two, right? Can you have negative two of something, like an amount of like numbers? No, right? You can't have like. So it's not really going to work in this case. So it's two or zero positive real zeros. Okay. Again, it doesn't tell you how many exactly positive real zeros. It's just telling you it's going to be one or the other. Um, then the next one is to find the negative. This is the one where students usually have trouble. Instead of doing f of x, you're now going to use f of negative x. So now, wherever there's an x, I'm going to replace that with a negative x. Does everybody see what I mathematically did? Yes. OK. So now we just need to remember, now we got to simplify this. So anytime you have a negative number raised to an odd power, that's always going to still be negative. Anytime you have a negative number raised to an even power, that's going to become positive. So negative x cubed is now positive x cubed. Positive x cubed times negative 3 is a negative 3x squared. Um, a negative 10x times negative x, or negative 10 times negative x, is now a positive 10x, and then plus 24. Okay. Again, we want to determine the number of sign changes. Number of sign changes is one. Can we subtract a one from, or can we subtract an even number from one and still have a positive number? No. So therefore, for negative, there is one negative real zero. Okay, now here's where it kind of gets confusing. For quadratics, we either had real solutions or complex solutions, right? Yes? But remember, for um, 
cubics, it's possible to have a real solution and then have two complex, right? Because how many, what's the degree of this polynomial? Three, right? There's two turning points, so the degree is three. How many, oh, however, how many real solutions are there? There's only one. So what do the other two solutions have to be? Complex, right? So when you have polynomials to a higher power than two, it's possible to have real and complex. So the, to find the number of complex, I like to use a table. And the table I do is here. Uh, am I getting out of my say? OK. So I can have positive zeros. I can have negative zeros. I can have complex zeros. And then I have the total. All right. So the number of positive zeros. Yes, Santana. I'm sorry? Where? This one? Well, this is negative x squared. So that's negative x times negative x, which is positive x squared. Positive x squared times negative 3 would give you negative 3x squared. Does that make sense? Um, all right, so the positive, how many possible positive real solutions do I have? 2 or 0. So that's why I did two columns. How about the number of negatives do I have? 1, right? There's no other option, so that's both 1. Based on the fundamental theorem of algebra, how many total zeros solutions do I need to have for this? 3. So if I asked you, or if on your test it asks you, hey, what are the number of complex zeros for this polynomial? Well, if you have two positive, one negative, and you need three total, how many complex should you have? Zero. Because 2 plus 1 is 3. Well, if you have zero positive, one negative, how many complex should you have? Two. So the answer to how many complex solutions are there would be 2 or 0. Okay. Again, this does not give us a definitive answer. However, we know what the answer is, don't we? Because we did the answer. So let's see if our answer makes sense. We have one negative and two positive. Does that fit one of these columns? Yeah. yeah. So actually, this is the correct column. But when you guys are going to do your homework, you're not going to know what the answers are. I'm just, you're just going to tell me what the options are. Does that make sense? OK. Do you guys want to try one? I'll be done teaching. But you just want to try one, I can check your answers? Yeah, OK. Um, 